Last week, the CDC reported a potential breakthrough in its investigation into vaping-related illnesses that have been sweeping the country. Dozens of people have died uh, since the problem first popped up earlier this year, and now investigators are zeroing in on a synthetic form of vitamin E. Now here to talk more about that with us is Dr. Laura Borgel from the CU Skagg School of Pharmacy, and I think vitamin E acetate may have surprised us because I think most people expected some chemical that we thought of as more dangerous or formaldehyde or something else was yeah. going to turn up. Vitamin E we tend to think of as a friendly chemical. Correct. So how does vitamin E and acetate hurt us in these cases? Right, so vitamin E is commonly found in lotions or in foods. Yeah. In this case, when vitamin E acetate is inhaled, it can cause severe lung injury. And so it, it thickens too? Is, I mean, how do you describe it? I, so the vitamin E is used in these products to dilute it and then thicken the uh, oils that are okay. used in vaping or e-cigarettes. And so it's used as a, an agent that they would add to the THC or nicotine products. Commonly? Like are we seeing it in most products, many products, or do we know yet? I mean, obviously, you and I were just talking in the break about what we don't know about right. vaping at this point, but is, is vitamin E acetate going to be commonly in, in many products? In the cases that have been reviewed, there's been um, almost 2,200 cases now as of yesterday. Wow. They have found that a majority of these products with the vitamin E acetate are found in products coming from informal sources. Okay. So it could be from family, friends, or online in particular as well. And that seems to be the common thread is a lot of them are, are you know, access is through other means rather than the ones that are regulated. A Correct. Bit. Either through the FDA or even regulated through testing of various chemicals that we do with for many of our products here as well. As far as testing this, we were also talking about what we don't know about what's in vaping products mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. Can you trust what they tell you is in a vaping product? You talk about informal sources, yeah. that, that means anything could possibly be in there. Is that, is that you, one of your concerns, Correct. is that we don't know what's in there? Some products can be certified with some laboratory analysis in terms of the content or pesticides and fertilizers. Vitamin E acetate was not on our radar, mm -hmm. as, you, as you said earlier, and so I think we'll be looking to that more in the future, but right now it's not commonly tested with many of our products. Is the problem that it's being inhaled or that it's heated and then inhaled, or do we know how it's changing that, that makes vitamin E so dangerous? Particularly when it's being vaped, mm -hmm. um, that is really the most dangerous form to cause this significant lung injury, which is causing hospitalizations and potential deaths across the country as well. So it's really the inhaled, vaped products that are most concerning. So it's like this great scientific mystery that you're researching, but with a sense of urgency. Absolutely. And um, there have been some notifications of, at this point, absolutely avoiding all products that mm -hmm. are uh, yeah. vaped products to ensure, especially for the THC and nicotine, to ensure that you wouldn't be exposed to this substance inadvertently. Well, Scary. parents, uh, and, and just if you're related to someone who's vaping, if it's not you, uh, we are consuming a lot of information about this right now. We appreciate all the research that's happening, but we're also a little nervous about what we might find. But we appreciate you sharing what we do know at this point, Dr. Borgel. Thank you very much. I really Thank appreciate you. it. It's good to have you here today. All right, Alexander.